This is Kira, my Mexican black king snake, and you haven't seen her on this channel in quite some time. She's a beautiful animal and arguably is my calmest, most relaxed snake. I can take her out, handle her, she's never bit me, she doesn't musk, she's very calm and really loves to chill. In the winter time when I wear hoodies, she'll even curl up in my sleeve and just lay there while I read or whatever it is. She's very calm, that's the point. She's very, very calm and well-tempered. This animal, however, is in need of a serious enclosure upgrade. And in today's video, we're going to be upgrading her significantly. Kira sort of lives the normal snake life, if you will. A lot of people raise their neonate snakes or young juvenile snakes in bins. And that's been working quite fine for her. However, it's time for her to get the supreme upgrade. And I mean, I'm not joking. We're, we're really gonna be giving her an awesome enclosure. Trust me. I wanna take a moment to sincerely thank Exoterra for sponsoring today's video. Without them, I wouldn't have the enclosure as well as several really cool products that we're gonna talk about in a bit that are going to be incorporated into Kira's future home. It's gonna be pretty awesome and I can't wait to tell you all about them. Now, before we get into today's video, I want to take a very quick moment to say my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles like Kira here, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you are interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one to two videos a week. Thanks very much. All right, so Kira, are you ready? to go into a really, really big new home? I hope you are. I mean, you have a lot of growing to do yet, but I think this will suit you for quite some time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This really big terrarium is going to be, let me just get it off this shelf, Kira's new home. This thing is big, uh, really big, especially for the size she is now, but she deserves it. She's the best snake ever. Ah. Ah. So this right here is a 36 long by 18 deep by 18 tall Exoterra terrarium. And holy moly, you guys are in for a treat. This thing is going to be beautiful. Let's go. Okay, my friends, first thing we need to do is unpackage this beautiful terrarium. Exoterra terrariums always come with an elegant background, but for this build, I'd like to switch it out for something custom. Now it's time to show you a bunch of the supplies I think I'm going to be using for this build. We have lots of driftwood I collected, some amazing stone desert substrate and silicone, a big cork background. You see those in most of my tanks. And this is one of the products we're gonna be talking about. More on that soon. Some beautiful live plants that are actually native to the parts of Mexico these snakes live. And yeah, let's take everything back out again and get started. I cut out a cork tile to make the background of this tank. First thing we're gonna do is make sure that it fits properly. Lucky for me, I'm a really good measurer. And uh, yeah, this is a perfect snug fit. So snug, I feel like we almost don't need the silicone but we're obviously gonna add some just in case. There we go, that should probably do it. Now it's time to place our background over the silicone, being careful to press every side onto it firmly. Now that this is done, I'm going to move the terrarium out of the room because the silicone does give off some fumes while it's curing. A day later, we should be good to continue with the process. Okay everybody, this is the funnest part. You need to create the environment your animal is going to live in. I have lots of wood here and I'm trying to figure out what sort of scape I want to go with, taking advantage of the full height this enclosure provides so that no space is wasted. After fidgeting around with all this wood, I came up with this layout I really liked, but it's hard to do because the wood's not going to stay where you want it. 
uh, let, let's put this up where it needs to be before anything else tumbles. I think we got something good going on here. All right, everyone, get your gloves on because this part is messy but fun. This is the Exoterra Stone Desert Substrate and it's a blast to use and incorporate in your enclosure builds. This substrate is incredibly versatile. Allow me to explain. By adding water to it, the clay-based substrate can be mashed up into a cement-like material. Using this, we can do anything we want, from creating rocky outcrops, backgrounds, caves, and more. A little bit more water to get that consistency we want, and I think we got what we need. We're going to be using this to fasten the wood to our background and anchor it to the ground. You'll see carefully what I'm doing here. Mashing it against the wall and the glass, we're securing our wood. I'm also going to place this large piece of stone slate to help support the wood up from falling. And we're also going to add more of the stone desert substrate to the base to help anchor it and keep it secure. Again, I'm going to continue to add more of the substrate to different points, touching different parts of the tank to help secure everything in place. We're going to add some here so that each piece of wood is fastened to the other. And as this hardens, it will hold very well. Here, I'm using some stone slate to create a nice cave and basking area for Kira. I'm going to extend the scape by adding more wood to it. Using the desert stone substrate, we're seamlessly extending it to make it look like one large piece of driftwood. Again, as you can see, everything is secure. Now, we're going to be adding some Mexico native plants endemic to where the snake is from. I'm mixing some substrate, peat moss and exoterra desert sand. We're going to use this to plant some sedum morganianum into parts of our scape. I'm gently nestling the root system into the soil we deposited into the driftwood. Then we're going to bury them carefully and articulate the plants in the position we want them to grow. Lots of the small little leaves will fall off, but those will grow if you put them over soil and keep them relatively moist. Now we're going to add some loose substrate to kind of stick to that moistened stone desert substrate, sort of accent and make everything look more rustic and natural. With the left side of the enclosure looking pretty barren, I want to do something different here. I'm going to create a large outcrop to house another plant native to Mexico. Using the stone desert substrate, we begin to work our way up, mashing it into the corner, into the background to secure everything. We need to be able to fix a pot to this and work around it. With a good position in mind, we add some more of the material and begin to make our shape surrounding the pot. I periodically pulled the plant pot out to see how things were holding up and together. Looking good, stuck it back in and we kept adding more material again. Now it's time to do a trial test for our Echeveria, which will be housed here, another Mexican native plant. It's beautiful and articulate and will do fantastic. Looks like things are holding well, but I want this area to look more dynamic and accessible to Kira. So we're adding some driftwood to different points for her to slither up and use the space more easily. This is looking so cool. What do you guys think? Time for another quick test. Moving the plant in to see. Yup. Boy oh boy does this look great. Alright, well we can remove it again, put our pot in to secure the shape, and wait a day. By then, it should have all hardened and be ready to support the plant. I wanted to add as many rocky outcrops and hideouts for Kira as possible, mimicking the natural environment this snake would be found. Using more of the stone desert substrate and a bunch of thin slate that isn't too heavy, I created these outcrops, and I think she's going to use them and really find a sense of security here. Alright, that's one. Let's get another piece over to merge it to the opposite side. Extend that a bit. Perfect. Now that it's been 24 hours of hardening, we can install our Echeveria into the outcrop. That looks beautiful. 
we're making some awesome progress. All right, everyone, it's substrate time. Mixing peat moss and the stone desert substrate, we're going to place a few inches of it into the tank. There's no concern here to have a drainage layer because frankly speaking, this isn't some sort of bioactive tank and we're not gonna be having an excess of water because the environment will be kept mostly dry. I don't know what you guys think, but this is shaping up to look pretty awesome. Take a look at the dynamic side over here. She's gonna have a blast hiding out and she has plenty of areas to go. Look at those caves, the wood. Oh man, if I was a king snake, I'd wanna live in there too. We're gonna add a bit of slate here so she has more areas to check out and get warm on. But you know what, I'm kinda getting cold feet. I'm gonna add more substrate to raise the level by a few inches. Blending up more stone desert substrate and peat moss evenly, let's add that to the tank and see how that makes a difference. You'll notice that the mixture for this batch is significantly lighter than that of the previous substrate layer. That's because I added a lot more of the stone desert substrate. I gotta say though, I really love the look of it. It's incredibly naturalistic and really makes it look like we took a slice of the desert out there and just stuck it in this tank. Next, we're adding a little bit more to our scape. Lots of wood and branches for Kira to have to navigate through. You know, not just have a flat tank. There's wood everywhere. She has to slither up and over and under. Perhaps one could consider this a form of exercise and enrichment. All right. Today's video is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Now that we've set up a terrarium for Kira, it's time to put her into the enclosure. But one of the things that we have to bear in mind is that although this animal is from a very arid, warm environment, these animals do still have the ability to find humid climates to facilitate processes such as shedding, finding a humid egg laying site, and more. So what is the best way we can recreate this in captivity? How do we offer our animals the ability to find these necessary micro-humid habitats or climates in a terrarium. I have the solution for you. Thanks to my friends at Exoterra, we're going to be talking about a very exciting product that allows you to make sure that your pets will have the micro-humid habitat they need. So these are the Exoterra Moisture Retaining Ceramic Corner Caves. And they come in three models. There's a large, medium, and small. Over here, we have the Big Rock Moisture Retaining Ceramic Caves. And these are pretty cool. The Big Rock Caves also come in three different sizes. What comes to mind for the large one would be to be using it for a ball python. I know so many people that struggle to keep humidity levels adequate enough for their ball pythons to shed properly, and I know that this cave would do the trick. In principle, the design of these caves is pretty genius. Simply fill the top reservoir with water, which by the way, serves as a dual purpose of being a water dish. Over time, the unique hygroscopic properties of the ceramic material will regulate the hide's humidity and temperature in a natural way by absorbing and slowly releasing moisture from the water reservoir above. Now for me, the most exciting thing about these products is simply the fact that they allow you to create a humid microclimate for your pets in your enclosure. That's not always an easy thing to do. Whether you're misting the whole thing down and elevating the humidity everywhere, which isn't good for certain species, or things are just getting too dry, a product like this really helps facilitate the need to create a small area where an animal can not only feel secure, because it's the shape of a cave where it can hide, but also provides it with that humid gradient without affecting the entire enclosure space. The big rocks also have removable tops, which is really cool, giving you the ability to not disturb the animal by taking the whole thing out and messing around there. You can just check in. These products also offer your animals a safe place to hide, de-stress, or potentially lay eggs, and more. I'm excited to use one of these in my king snake enclosure for Kira, because it's gonna give her the perfect microclimate to shed properly. So we're gonna go ahead now and pick one of these and place it in our new setup so she has a nice, safe, humid space to go and shed when she needs to. Thank you so much to my friends over at Exoterra for sponsoring today's video. I'm eternally grateful to be able to use all these products and that you support what I do here on Reptiliatus channel. Okay guys, it's time for the big move. 
Kira's new terrarium is all set up with a basking area, lots of debris on the ground to navigate through for enrichment and security, and of course her Exoterra moisture retaining corner cave which is at 99% humidity. Her terrarium contains many Mexican native plants, making this habitat a biotope. I'm so excited for this animal to be moved in now and see how she adjusts to her much larger, much more enriching new home. Wow everyone, this has truly been quite a long time coming. I can't even really express how excited I am to move this girl into her new home. I guess it's the moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead now and, and see where she wants to go and uh, put her in her new home. This is so exciting. Kira wasted no time getting familiar with her new terrarium. As you can see, she's flicking her tongue around, using her senses, and exploring this incredible new habitat. And I even decided to take a quick time lapse so you guys can see just how she uses every single inch of this terrarium to her advantage and for her liking. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, which of your pets would you use a moisture retaining cave for? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. While well, everyone, it's been a few weeks, Kira's using her basking site and she's settled in well. Time for a frozen thawed meal. Well, it looks like Kira is really settling in because she has a good appetite here. Kira, Kira. Look at this girl. Holy macaroni. <laughs> Look at her. That's a happy snake. Nice. Sometimes I do this just to animate it a little bit more. Very good. As you can see, it's perfectly fine for the animal to consume a little bit of substrate in the process of eating. Nothing's gonna happen to her, she's perfectly good. Breakdown, she's drinking, she's hydrated, it'll all pass. Well my friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video as I made a new terrarium for Kira, my Mexican black king snake to live in. Seems to me like she's settling in so well and I can't wait to give you future updates on how amazing this animal is gonna be doing in the future. If you enjoyed watching this video and you wanna see more content pertaining to keeping Kira, my Mexican black king snake, then feel free to check out the link up above and also, don't forget to subscribe and answer today's question of the day. Thanks so much for watching everyone, see you soon.